I just don't like the way dynamic EQs and multiband compressors are described. Example, one's a compressor that acts like an EQ, one's an EQ that acts like a compressor, or is one is broad strokes and one is for surgical work. This has been bothering me for a long time, and so much so, last week while I was in the gym, I started getting curious about how dynamic EQs are built. Like, how do they operate as a dynamic processor with an EQ filter, logistically? So, I sketched out my theory in between my sets whilst training my back, and here is the note I scribbled out. So what I did was, then I took that note, went back to the studio, routed it all out, and it worked. More so, this left me with other questions, like how is a multiband compressor designed? And I came across this video by Dan Worrell, which answered a lot more, and it opened up a Pandora's box. Now I can share with you and objectively define the technical differences between a dynamic EQ and a multiband compressor. Before we jump into it, please smash the subscribe button, like the video, and also join the newsletter in the description below for unique behind the scenes work on my upcoming course, Punchy Mixers Bootcamp. So now I'm gonna show you the design design or the schematic of a dynamic EQ. I'm going to quickly draw it out here and then I'm going to show you how I've plotted it out here in Pro Tools to uh, sort of confirm my hypotheses. So what you got is you have an input here and that goes into a parallel filter. Now let's say we're just using a bell, a bell peak. So we want to boost 120 hertz. Well that will go into a band pass filter in parallel at 120 hertz. There we go. And then the main signal will go through and the bandpass signal combined with the through signal, so plus, minus, okay, so bandpass plus minus, if you want to boost, you boost, if you want to minus, you don't actually minus, you actually inverse the phase, and then you get your output. So you can do a boost at 120 hertz. Cool, I like that. Now let's just scribble that out for now, and have a look at how a dynamic EQ would differ from that. So we have our input. And yes, we're going to go to our band pass, but we want this band pass to be dynamic. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two band passes. One band pass in phase, one out of phase, and then we've got our through. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a delta signal from our dynamics process. Now, if we want to compress that signal, what we're going to do is we need to weaken the band passed in phase signal against the negative one. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a filter, which will be our compressor. And then these two will sum back together with the through and then go out. So we're working parallel. That's going to cause compression, downward compression on that bandpass filter when it sums back with the through channel. Now, likewise, if we want to do expansion, where's my little tool here? If we want to do expansion, we basically change that out and we add the filter to here. And then we filter the negative one, so the positive one is more stronger, and we get a boost or an expansion at that crossover. So, that, so that's dynamic EQ, dynamic. Now, what's the difference between that and a multiband? So a dynamic EQ uses a parallel topology, whereas a multiband one will split the band. So at the start of the process, it will work at, by splitting the bands out. So you have your low, mid, and highs. Then those get processed by a filter. F will represent filter, which could be the compression on that each band. And then they get re-summed together. And then it goes out. So this works in series. All right. So that is a core difference in the actual construction of those two processes. One does something in parallel. So if we actually go back to where we were before, If we go back to here where we were before, these parallel filters are only effective when this filter is engaged. So you're not breaking the signal apart and then reconstructing it. It is only effective when the compression is applied. That's great. That is really important to know. So what I've got here to demonstrate this is some white noise. And this is just going to give you the fundamental of the parallel. So here I've got a send, a parallel send to a positive, so it's it's in phase with the original signal, and a negative, where I've rotated the phase here. Now, I've got two EQs, exactly the same, band pass ones, so it's just letting that 129 hertz through to work in parallel. Now, if I want to get a cut at that 129 hertz, I'll remove the positive signal, and we'll see there's a cut there at 129 hertz. Now, if I want to boost at that signal, I'll remove the negative one, and I get a boost at that signal. So we can see how these filters interact in parallel with that original signal. Now let's get rid of that and actually hear it with some context. So this is a dynamic EQ 
And when I turn this compressor on, it's going to duck the low frequencies. When I turn this compressor on the negative channel, it's going to boost or e expand those low frequencies. Take a listen to this. So there I've got a dynamic EQ that I can expand or compress. Basically all the filters work in parallel. Now let's look at a multiband series. And these are, this is just observing the actual differences between how they process signal. I'll mute the dynamic one. Now what I've got here, and this is a credit to Dan Worrell and his video and how he did it in Reaper, which is much easier to do than here in Pro Tools. I had to create a bunch of buses. So what we do is we filter the low end using a low pass filter. We filter the top end using a high pass filter. And then we create sends separately. They have to be separate where the, we rotate the phase. So I've rotated each of these sends. So low rotate, high rotate. It rotates the phase. And then we resum that into the mid channel, which is here. And this mid channel, then we can monitor the mid signal because it's the difference and it's perfectly in phase. Listen to this. So I've got the original signal and then I'll put the whole multiband in. Okay, ready? It completely nulls. All right, now listen to this. I'll monitor the low. So there, that's the band splitting aspect of a multiband processor, at least leaving it linear phase. The difference is now, instead of like a dynamic EQ where the processing is in parallel, the processing for each of these bands, if you want to control the low end, is in series. So basically, you process that band and then it resums back together later, which is where issues arise. So what does this mean for you? Well, it's good to be conscious of how these processes are interact. If you want something more transparent, Dynamic EQ is going to allow you to do that because it's only ever coming into effect when the filter is engaged. And even then, you're not splitting up bands in series to then resum them back together. The processor is always in parallel, so you're not disturbing other aspects of that signal. So I honestly think Dynamic EQs are a much more eloquent and better sonic solution in terms of the way audio fidelity is concerned, in terms of you're not affecting the phase relationship, you're only affecting the timbre or dynamics when it's needed, whereas multiband splits it all up and then it has to recompile back together. I think there's more use cases where I'm going to be using dynamic EQ in instances where I would have used multiband for this reason. I like the fact that that processing needs to take place in a parallel aspect to the original signal and only ever affects that original signal when it is in effect and I need it. So my trade-off is, yes, there is going to be some phase destruction there, but that is for the nature of the filter that I need to apply, not necessarily inherent in the design or built into the design where I just turn it on and it's already applying those crossovers and processing without anything even going on in the first place. So anyway, that's my video for you guys today. Thank you so kindly for watching. This was a lot of fun for me. Make sure you go check out Dan Worrell's video, actually doing it in Reaper rather than my chopped up workaround in Pro Tools. And until next time, Take care.